So far, we've seen how to write very, very simple numbers in scientific notation. For example, 500 billion, if we count the digits, is going to be 5 times 10 to the 5 times 10 to the 11th. And now that we have a little bit more language, we can look a little bit more closely at what's going on here. First, what makes this number so simple? Well, notice, here's its most significant digit and also its least significant digit. This number only has one significant digit. In general, then, this part of the number, the significand, is going to be made up of the significant digits. Notice the similarity between these two terms. Significand, significant digits. Coincidence? No, definitely not a coincidence. That's why I like this term, the significand, better than the alternative term, the mantissa. Okay, so the significand is made up of the significant digits. Let's think about how to do that. And let's think about how to do that by looking at a number with more than one significant digit. I'm going to choose a not too terribly big number, 3,200, with two significant digits. Right. Here's my most significant, and here's my least significant digit. I have two choices for how I might choose to render this in scientific notation. I could look at the place that the least significant digit is in. So my significant digits are just 3, 2. And then this will be times 10 to the 1, 0, 2 zeros. So 10 to the second. Or I could look at the place that the most significant digit is in. How would that look? All right, I want to have the digits 3 and 2, but now I want to use 10 to the third. Hmm. The way I have to do that is by writing 3.2. Notice if I do the arithmetic here, 3.2 times 10 to the third, that's 3.2 times a thousand, that's three, two, I could write three zeros and then one digit after the decimal point, or I could think three, two, move the decimal point three places to the right. And now I'm not going to write in the decimal point because I don't mean to make those two zeros significant. So, if I choose option one, I get one really big advantage. My significand is a whole number. If I want to go back to decimal notation, I just add zeros on the end. But it turns out option two has even bigger advantages. The obvious one is that the magnitude actually shows the order of magnitude. Right? The order of magnitude for this number is this 10 to the third. That's really good. We can just see it by looking. But the most important advantage is that if I choose to round to a different number of significant digits, I don't have to do any messy recalculating. I just round the significant. What do I mean by that? If I go to round 32 times 10 to the second to one significant digit, 32 times 10 to the second, that's 3,200. That rounds to 3,000, which is 3 times 10 to the third, 
Ugh. It's hard to see the relationship between these two numbers. On the other hand, if I decide to round 3.2 times 10 to the third to one significant digit, well, that's still a way of writing 3,200, which still rounds to 3,000, which is 3 times 10 to the third. Notice, I could have done that just by rounding the significant. And it turns out that that advantage is big enough that we choose option two to be our standard form for scientific notation. What does that mean? If we have a number in scientific notation, this is what it looks like. A number written in scientific notation has the form a significant times 10 to the power of the magnitude where s is a number with one non-zero digit before the decimal point, and then m, the magnitude, is an integer. So I'm going to give you some examples of well-formed scientific notation, and then some examples that are not well-formed. 2.3 times 10 to the third, 3 times 10 to the negative eighth, or 5.0182 times 10 to the second. Any of those is properly formed scientific notation. What would be wrong? 75 times 10 to the negative 4 is not proper scientific notation because this is not a valid significant because it's a two-digit number. No decimal point in there or 0 0.015 times 10 to the seventh. Again, this has no non-zero digits before the decimal point. That's not allowed either. The last thing that's not allowed is something like 6 times 10 to the 1.4. Right, what? This is not an integer. We haven't even said what 10 to the 1.4 would mean yet. Later on, we, we will say that that means something but that's still not valid scientific notation. The magnitude has to be an integer. So if I give you a number, how do you put it in scientific notation? I'm going to work two examples of converting a number to scientific notation. One for a very large number, 772,030,000, and one for a very small number, point zero 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 eight one. So our very first step is to locate the most significant digit. In both cases that's going to be the leftmost non-zero digit. So that's the first seven here, the eight here. And now we're going to also locate the least significant digit in this number, no decimal point, so it's the rightmost non-zero digit, that's the three. In this number, there's a decimal point, so it's just the rightmost digit, that's the one. Okay, and then once I've done that, I can just copy the significant digits, and I'm going to put a decimal point after the most significant digit. Okay, now I just need to figure out the order of magnitude, which is going to be the place where the most significant digit is. So let's see, here I count out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is going to be times 10 to the 8th. And here I count out 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. 
8.1 times 10 to the negative 5. That's all there is to it. Now, this seems like a lot of steps, but each step is very easy. It mostly has to do with copying. Converting the other way, we're going to use some of our arithmetic skills. So there are going to seem to be fewer steps involved, but the steps themselves will be a little bit more complicated. So essentially, to convert from scientific notation, I'm just going to do the multiplication. So first, I'm going to just copy the significant, so just the digits 3, 1 in this case the digits 4, 0, 3, 6 in this case. And then I'm going to move the decimal point. If I have a positive magnitude, I'm going to move that many places to the right. So magnitude 7. I start where my original decimal point was, and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and I fill in a zero in each space I left. Now I'm going to check because this is the sort of place I could make mistakes. Is the order of magnitude really seven? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now for a positive magnitude I moved that many places to the right. For a negative magnitude I'm going to ignore the sign and move that many places to the left. So again, I'm going to start from where my decimal point was originally, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four places to the left. And again, I'm going to fill in zeros in my empty spaces. And then I'm going to check the order of magnitude again. Zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative 4. That checks out. You can see how you might make mistakes in counting out these spaces. So that step where you check the order of magnitude is actually very important.